time to make this cute dress for my little girl. First things first, I want to welcome anybody who's watching and for anybody who's returning, good for you. I didn't think you would. Congratulations, you surprised me. On to the next part of the agenda. So this is a simplicity pattern. It is pattern number 1507 and we're doing the D dress variation. The fabric that you see is from Joann's because that's the only decent fabric store that we have around here in the middle of nowhere. And the fabric I use for this is mostly the 100% cotton and so I have uh, this fabric which is going to be like the main part of the dress if you haven't noticed. And then I have a contrast fabric which is that golden yellow that I decided to uh, do the contrast with and I also have a lining fabric and I just did the lining in plain black uh, and you also have to deal with the netting fabric which if I ever have to do another pattern with the netting fabric and gather this much somebody should just shoot me in the foot before I start guys so there's a lot of fabric to cut so just sit back relax and I'll try to get through this as painlessly and quickly as possible. At this point, I want to mention, do better than me, pay attention to the diagrams for cutting out the fabric because there were some parts that I just completely fucking missed. And now we sew, starting with the bodies. So we're gonna take the body's front piece and the body's back pieces. We're going to stay stitch around the collar and then we're gonna stitch it together at the shoulders. Next, we work on the collar. We stitch the pieces together, trim the corners, flip it inside out, iron it flat, and then we attach it with a base stitch to the collar itself. Next is the front sash for the C and D variations. We fold the fabric in half, stitch along that line, flip it inside out, cinch it in the marked area, and then you're going to attach it to the front of the bodies and baste it there. You do about the same thing for the uh, back tie as well, and you attach it with a base stitch to the back pieces at the sides. Then he stitched the bodies down the sides. 
Then you put the bodies lining together in almost exactly the same way, except you don't have to do the sash shit this time. Then you stitch and understitch together at the neckline, then you baste around the armhole edges. Once we're done stitching the bodies together, we'll move on to the sleeves. This part I do have some footage missing, so I'm just going to go right through it. So what you're going to do is that you're going to stitch the two pieces together along that V, and then you're going to trim up the corner of that V without passing the seam line. Then you're going to close the seam by understitching it, uh, by pressing it towards the facing and then stitching it through the seam allowances. Then you stitch the underarm of the sleeve together with right sides together. Press the seam open after you're done. The sewing footage actually ends about here, so uh, next you turn the sleeve facing to the inside, press base raw edges together, and then you gather the top of the sleeves, and then you attach it to the armhole itself. Just a quick once over of how it should look once you're done. Next, we're going to be working on the outer skirt. Pretty straightforward. You stitch the skirt front piece to the skirt back piece at the side seams, and then you stitch the back pieces together up to the notch because that's the roundabouts where the zipper is going to be, and then you trim that notch. And you should probably remember this because it's going to get redundant from here on out for the rest of the skirt. And all the time that I'm not at the table is probably me pressing at my ironing table behind me. Then we pop out the net slip and we do basically the same shit for that one as we did before. I told you there was going to be some redundancy. Then we move on to the overskirt and do pretty pretty much the same exact thing with that too. I think the main difference between these three is that the uh, main skirt has a three inch hem. The net skirt has no hem because it's a fucking net. And then the overskirt does have a uh, hem, a regular narrow hem. Uh, 
And then you gather everything and the method that I found that I like the best is the zigzag stitch method that I learned from So Anastasia on YouTube. And once you're done gathering all of your layers, you're going to put all your layers together and you're going to baste it all together. And next we're going to start sewing together the lining slip pieces. And it's just sewing the three pieces together, but make sure for one of the pieces you leave down to the notch unstitched. Because we're going to need a zipper. Once you have those pieces stitched together, we're gonna move on and gather the waist of those pieces. And next is the lower and upper skirt ruffles, which you basically just stitch the pieces together and then you gather along the top edge of the pieces. And a prime example of mark your fabric while you're cutting it is this moment because I forgot to mark the uh, lines where the netting was supposed to go. Don't mind the janky ass mannequin, that's all I had to help prop this up to make it a little bit easier to pin the ruffle to the lining skirt itself. And then you stitch it together. And then you do it again for the other ruffle as well, just in case you didn't know. And after you're done with the uh, slip, you attach it with the rest of the skirt layers and you baste it together. And then after you have everything basted together, you go back through and then you stitch it together. Then line up the bodies and do it again. And then for everybody's favorite part is putting the zipper on the dress.
And next is the flower. Uh, you can buy a flower from wherever the hell you could get flowers for dresses from. But I couldn't find anything that pleased the palette. So I made my own. The method I use to make my own is one that I found on YouTube is just how to make organza flowers. Uh, I usually use this to make hair clips, but I went, you know what? I got the organza. Let's just fucking make a flower for for the dress. And I learned this over the years of making these flowers is if you get a little too close to the flame and your organza catches on fire. Don't pinch it out. It freaking hurts. Which I didn't do this time, but I did accidentally touch a knuckle and it hurt. And then next you see me busting out all my beads and buttons and whatnot, trying to find the perfect center for this flower. And I happen to find it in my charms box because I get a lot of junk jewelry and stuff, especially for my sister-in-law. Thank you, Rachel. And I just I found the perfect center in my box. You stitch the flower on, you throw the toddler in, and you have the cutest dress ever. At least for now. And thank you to anybody who stuck around and hopefully I could get more regular with videos but until that time comes along feel free to subscribe check out the Facebook page the Instagram the TikTok. what else do I have an Etsy and until next time see you on the stitch side <laughs> see what I did there <laughs>